Good morning, folks, and welcome to the CDC Gaming Show. I'm Casey Gonzalez, your guide to the world of gaming. Remember, we're all about fun here, because if you can't have a chuckle at the casino, then where can you? But we're not just here for laughs. We're here to bring you the most exciting, up-to-the-minute news from the industry high rollers. And today, we're starting off with a big bet. Now, we all love a good will they, won't they story, don't we? And Rush Street Interactive has got us all on the edge of our poker seats. Earlier this week, Rush Street CEO Richard Schwartz played his cards close to his chest when he was quizzed by CNBC correspondent Contessa Brewer about the company's availability for potential buyers. Rush Street Interactive, with a hefty $150 million in the bank and projected revenue of a cool $700 million this year, is to say the least an attractive bet. But Schwartz, while acknowledging the company's value and obligations to its shareholders, didn't quite roll the dice on a definitive answer. He did, however, give us a peek into Rush Street's game plan, expanding their gaming footprint into Latin American markets, Mexico, Colombia, and possibly even Peru and Argentina. Seems like the play of the day. Schwartz posed a thought-provoking question when he said, would you tap into Iowa's 4 million sports betting only population or venture into a more populous market like Mexico with its 130 million potential customers and less competition? Sounds like a high stakes game of risk to me. Swartz also doubled down on Rush Street's commitment to poker, and it seems they're not just playing for chips here. Rush Street is set to broadcast Poker Night in America from a private mansion in Las Vegas, featuring celebrities, athletes, and poker pros all chatting it up and creating a fun poker environment. So whether Rush Street is in play or not, one thing is clear, they're not afraid to bet big on the future of gaming. And as they say, you gotta know when to hold them. Well, you get it. Stay tuned to see how this hand plays out. From the Lone Star State, we've got a table of high stakes legislative poker that didn't quite play out. The high profile push to bring casinos to Texas this legislative session folded on Friday, despite a cup on the desk of state Republican Charlie Green burying the message, I'd rather be at the casino. It seems this one hand Texas isn't ready to play. Supporters of the legislation faced with a rigid deadline and a need for supermajority support were unable to round up the votes needed to advance. In and out of the state house, Jaron, one of the leaders in this effort, postponed consideration of the house joint resolution 155 until January 2027 effectively checking out of the game for this session. Despite the setback, gaming advocates aren't out of the chips just yet. A separate proposal to legalize online sports betting made it out of the house by a razor thin margin, just managing to stay in the game. This legislative poker game has seen its share of bluffing and betting, but for now, it seems the house, or rather the house has won. Get ready to experience the hottest new addition to the casino floor, the Cascada Slant. This dual screen platform is the bee's knees. With an integrated base and removable topper that makes perfect for main casino floor slight lines and high limit slot areas. And let me tell you, this baby is consistent. With the same winning library of the best in-class brands and core games that drove the Cascada dual screen upright to become the number one multi-screen upright cabinet per Eilers Fantini report in December, 2022. You can go wrong with this machine. Plus, it's got a dual 27-inch HD monitor and an optimal 27-inch topper, just like its upright counterpart. That's what we call a double whammy, folks. And if that's not enough for you, it shares common components with Cascada 43 and Cascada Dual, including the iDeck. But wait, there's more. The Cascada Slant has an optimized profile that's low to the ground without the topper, so it's perfect for slight lines. And the main screen angle is optimized for the best player egonomics. So you won't have to worry about any aches and pains when you're raking in the big bucks. This bad boy is also ideal for high limit areas with a range of higher denomination options, including one and two dollar. You know what they say, folks, go big or go home. And with the Cascada Slant, you'll definitely be going big. Overall, the Cascada Slant is the next big thing in the successful Cascada series, offering a double up dual success with its dual screen platform optimized profile 
and flexibility in service support. So what are you waiting for? Head over to the casino floor and check out the Cascada Slant today. Shifting gears to the world of sports betting fanatics, the sports merchandising titan is doubling down on the bet on U.S. sports betting. The company has agreed to purchase Points Bet's U.S. business for a cool $150 million in cash, accelerating its own push into the sector. The move follows Fanatic's recent launch of its new online sportsbook in Tennessee and Ohio. This deal will not only boost the company's tech and trading capabilities, but also provide valuable market access in new states. PointsBet, which launched in the U.S. in 2019, was known for its aggressive sportsbook strategies, including a $500 million deal with NBC Sports. However, in the face of mounting competition and rising customer acquisition costs, the company had recently been seeking potential buyers for its North American business. Fanatic's bold move into the betting space, armed with its database of 95 million sports fans, could be a game changer. Let's see if this gamble pays off. Now let's head to Shreveport, Louisiana, where the city is rethinking its smoking ban in casinos. After passing the smoke-free workplace ordinance in 2020, council members are now considering a resolution that would allow smoking in casinos, but with a catch. The proposed change would require at least 25% of casino space to remain smoke-free. The aim is to strike a balance between the economic considerations of the casino industry and the health risks of secondhand smoke exposure. Health officials are, however, advising against the modification, with concerns over casino workers contracting secondhand smoke. The American Cancer Society Alice Klein said that smoke-free workplace policies are the only way to prevent secondhand smoke exposure at work. It's a tough bet to place balancing economics and health concerns. The final decision will be made on May 23rd, so stay tuned for the outcome. In the world of gaming, Bally's Corporation announced a significant executive reshuffle. The notable departure is CFO Bobby Levan, who is leaving to pursue other opportunities, according to the company Bally CEO Robertson Reeves. Praise Lavin for his contributions, including leading the acquisition, financing, and integration of Gamesies. The incoming CFO pending regulatory approval is Marcus Glover, a gaming industry veteran with the experience from the Borgata in Atlantic City, Horseshoe Cleveland, Thistletown Racino, and Caesars Entertainment. Glover also brings a strong academic background with a master's degree from Duke University of School of Business and a graduating certificate from Morehouse College. In addition, Bally's is welcoming Charles Diao as Senior Vice President of Finance and Corporate Treasurer, a Wall Street veteran and former partner at Bear Stearns. Diao brings a wealth of financial experience to the table. Lastly, the company has formed an operational committee of its new board of directors to be led by newly appointed Vice Chairman of the board, Jamin Patel. Patel's mission is to streamline operations, reduce costs, and establish a new corporate center. It seems like Bally's is gearing up for a fresh chapter in its growth strategy, and we'll certainly be keeping an eye on how these management changes play out in the upcoming months. From reshuffles to reinventions, our next segment takes us from the executive suite to the heart of game technology. We're excited to welcome Noah Akers from Akers Manufacturing for an exclusive interview. We'll be discussing the company's latest innovations and the future of gaming technology. Don't go anywhere. All right, everybody. We got Noah Akers here joining us. Noah, tell us a little bit about your role at Akers Manufacturing and what your day to day looks like. Oh, hey, Casey, how you doing? Um, well, that's that's kind of an interesting question. We don't really have defined roles around here, so we're just we're all we all have our own shovel and we're we're digging as you know as fast and deep as we can. So, for me personally, I, I tend to focus on kind of like the product innovation standpoint, as well as the sales and marketing, uh, just to further, you know, the the awareness and the effectiveness of our company. Uh, we're all about modernizing the uh, casino environment. And so anything we can do to attract new and younger players and increase loyalty from the existing players is is what we specialize in. That's awesome. And I, I, I totally feel that coming from a, a small company and, and starting a small company myself, it's, it's kind of, you're doing finance, you're doing building, yeah. you're doing innovative. So from the innovative side, uh, which sounds really cool, uh, I know you posted it on your LinkedIn recently, uh, Tebow, ticket in, bonus out. We all know about Tito. Uh, explain to us what Tebow is and how it works. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, so so everybody knows what Tito is. It's been around for 20 plus years. I don't think that there's really been much of any new features uh, implemented in that, you know, two decades. 
Uh, so we figured out a way to actually communicate directly with the ticket printer uh, and, and we can blend uh, the real time data that we get from the slot machine as well as you know data that we might get elsewhere. Uh, and what that allows us to do is to give bonuses from the ticket printer. So like here's an example right here. We have this uh, uh, super lucky bonus free play. This is $100 of free play. This could pop out of the ticket printer and you just slide it back nice. in and you get 100 bucks of promotional credits on the slot machine. And, and the really cool thing is that can be triggered based on like your win loss, based on your birthday. If you had a favorite football team, like I like the Chargers, uh, if the Chargers <laughs> nice. score a touchdown, maybe like they'll pop out a, a Charger bonus for me. Uh, but we can just interface a, a, a wide variety of data points uh, and ultimately just cause that bonus to, to come from the ticket printer, which is pretty cool. That is awesome. I mean, and it just, it, it saves, I feel like the customer time from traveling back to the, you know, the, the player center or, or the machines, if they lose their card, you know, and I, I, unless it needs the loyalty program to do, to do that. Oh, dude. Oh, oh it, it, you're exactly right. This is crazy. Like we are, you know, casinos are competing against other modern technology providers, modern service providers. And to say, Hey, you got to go stand in line at the cage or the players club or go to the kiosk and, you know, cash out of your game. That's not what people want today. And that's why we have such a hard time attracting younger players is because the services we provide are designed, you know, 20, 30 years ago uh, in a bygone era, era. So today it's all about convenience and personalization. And that's what we're providing directly at the machine. You don't have to get up and walk anywhere. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, speaking of which, we know you got a fireside chat coming up at the uh, B. Riley 23rd Annual Investor Conference. You know, what are some of the key themes and insights? You know, what are you looking for at the conference and what do you kind of want to talk about there? Well, so we are in the process of, of uh, planning an IPO. And so we're just meeting with uh, different investors, different analysts to kind of further our, our, our path uh, towards accessing the public markets, which is really important for us because uh, there's obviously in, in gaming, there's a, a, a ton of regulation. And as a public company, we, there's, you know, a different standard that's a little bit easier to manage. Uh, so we're looking to access the public markets and at, at the B. Riley Investor Conference, uh, that's just part of our, our strategy of, of going public. That's cool. That's awesome. And we can't wait to see, you know, what comes from that and, and to see the IPO go live and, and follow you on that journey. You know, as the industry goes cashless and everyone's talking about cashless, is acres positioning themselves uh at all in that market and where do you see you know the industry as a whole going forward uh do you see us going cashless eventually oh a hundred percent i think that um you know i i don't think that cash is going to go away but i think that every machine and every table game is ultimately going to become cashless compatible where if you want to buy in or cash out from a, a mobile app uh that has to be there for you and the reason is, you know, so today, I think fewer than 20% of game of slot revenues come from people under the age of 50, wow. right? And I think uh, over 20% comes from people over 70, wow. over yeah. 70. And like, if you Google like average life expectancy in the U.S., it's 77 years old, right? right. So what does that mean? Within 10 years, like 20% of our business is going to literally die off. Uh, and this is important because... You know, if you if you look at consumer trends, I think it's 70 or 80 percent of transactions in the economy are non cash. Right. right. So when a casino is basically getting, hey, we're cash only. What is that saying to people who who don't carry cash, which is a huge percentage of the population? Now, we're saying we're closed for your business. So it's absolutely imperative that casinos adopt cashless uh, to maintain relevancy in the future. Uh, let me quickly just add about what we're doing in cashless. I think that uh, today, our application called Cashless Casino is clearly the market leader. We're at, we're active in 10 states and 21 uh, different casinos doing cashless to slots and tables. And so I think that right now we're literally the only cashless system that's recognized as, as working and, and, you know, bringing value to customers and to operators. And we're, we're really proud of that. Uh, we're very excited to be uh, launching in California over the summer at Rolling Hills. And uh, things are moving in Nevada, so we'll be live in Nevada uh, this year as well. We're very excited for that. And I think that that's going to be a major tipping point uh, in the adoption of cashless across the industry because people that want to adopt it, they want to see it in Vegas. And when right. you can't see the number one system in Vegas, that makes people kind of slow down a little bit. But it, it's coming to Vegas very soon, and uh, people are going to love it, and it's going to grow from there. 
Yeah, I uh, I think I had just joined the industry when uh, the the final the narrative went away that we we never thought the coin hopper was going anywhere. No, we need the coins, we need the coins, and and it's it's gone. So I totally yeah. agree with you, and uh, thank you for that insight. You know, to kind of end this interview and wrap it up, what would you like the viewers to know about Acres Manufacturing, and and what are you most excited to share with your customers uh, over the next six to twelve months? We are here for new ideas, new players, new profits, new ideas, right? And uh, that's exactly what it takes to get new players and new profits is, is new ideas. Anything from Tebow to cashless to bonusing on the phone, uh, HD analytics. We're the first uh, systems vendor, systems provider to be able to provide real-time data from the slot machine at a machine-by-machine, player-by-player basis. So uh, anything that happens for a specific player, we we see that in real time and we can report it. Um, so it's it's just very important when you when you look at what's going on outside of gaming, uh, how quickly other sectors have modernized. And gaming is like kind of like the last man standing that still relies on physical loyalty cards and kiosks and waiting in line and cash and direct mail, snail mail to your mailbox. And the reason we do this is because we haven't adopted any new technology in, in like 25 years. And so we're here uh, to be that leader. And I think that uh, it, it's going to start working uh, very soon. It already is working, but it's going to start growing very soon. Noah, thank you for being on our show. Thank you for supporting the CDC Gaming Show. And we appreciate your time. And I'm sure we'll follow up to see how this Tebow rolls out. Hey, I love it. Thank you very much, Casey. You're doing a great job. Really, really like it. Really love the show. Thanks, man. Thank you all for tuning in to today's episode of the CDC Gaming Show. As always, we appreciate your time and your passion for all things gaming. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube and like our channel. And if you want, ring the notification bell. And of course, make sure to join us here every Saturday morning for more exciting news, analysis, and exclusive interviews from the world of gaming. Until then, keep your aces high, your chips stacked, and remember, the game is always on at the CDC Gaming Show. I'm your host, Casey Gonzalez, and I'll see you next time.